welcome to News Round on Channels Television, a recap of stories that made headlines during the week. The headlines now, APC, PDP, Labour Party, others beat INEC deadline to submit names of presidential and vice presidential candidates. House of Representatives moves to override President Muhammadu Buhari on statutory delegates clause. And President Buhari joins other leaders to observe his last Democracy Day parade as the sitting president. Plus, European Commission recommends Moldova to get candidate status. That's news round in view. And news round begins with political stories. The People's Democratic Party now appears set for next year's election as it crossed yet another hurdle after the presidential candidate of the party, Atikwa Bubakar, picked the governor of Delta State, Ifani Okowa, as his running mate in the 2023 general election. Senator Okowa was among the three names submitted by the 17-man committee, which was set up by the PDP National Working Committee, to select a running mate for the party's presidential candidate. It's another decision-making day at the National Secretariat of the main opposition, People's Democratic Party, as the 2023 presidential candidate, Alaja Tiko Bibaka, is set to present his running mate to the leadership of the party. <laughs> However, before he does that, the national chairman of the party makes some clarifications regarding the processes that culminated in the submission of three prospective running mates for the presidential candidate. The committee recommended three names to us and we transmitted those three names to the candidates contrary to all the speculations in the social media the national working committee or the party didn't select one name for the candidates it's time for the pdp presidential candidate to unveil his running mate to the party and Alaja Tiko Bubaka mounts the podium, listing the qualification he considered before coming to a decision on his running mate. In arriving at the decision, I held wild consultations with various stakeholders in our party. In these consultations, I made clear that my running mate would have the potential to succeed me at a moment's notice. That is a president in waiting. Mr. Bubaka then proceeds to announce his running mate. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the ticket the next Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Governor Ifeanyi Arthur Okowa. In his acceptance remarks, Governor Ifeanyi Okowa of Delta State pledges loyalty to the course of the party to win the 2023 presidential election. There is no doubt that there is a great work ahead of each and every one of us. The build back process is going to be collective. And we are trusting that all our party members will want to be part of that story at the end of the day. Having selected a presidential running mate, the People's Democratic Party, its presidential candidate, and the running mate now have the honorary status of uniting and mobilizing all their resources for the general elections in 2023. Also, the All Progressives Congress presidential candidate, Chief Bola Tinubu, is said to have named Kabiru Ibrahim Masseri as his running mate. The APC presidential candidate, Ashwaj Bola Tinubu, expressed confidence that the party is well positioned to defeat the PDP at the 2023 presidential election. Speaking in Abuja shortly after meeting with the governor of Imo State and chairman of the party's convention committee, Tinubu said the visit to the governor of Imo State is part of strategizing towards winning the presidential election. What is the essence of your visit to His Excellency the Governor of Imo State? To strengthen our party, eh? our path to victory, 
our strategy to defeat PDP. Yes, that enough for, for you? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> sir, he was the, he, uh, the Your Excellency, the Governor of Imo State, was the chairman of the convention committee. How would you rate his performance of that convention? <laughs> I do want me to. I got the victory. I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> to rate him poor. <laughs> okay, sir. Lastly, sir. Nigerians are waiting for your running mates. Any news, any updates on that? Uh, no, they go to Tinobu bus stop. <laughs> A former aide to former President Goodluck Jonathan, Dr. Donyo Kupe, has announced that he has been selected as the running mate to the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Pito B. Dr. Kupe made this known during an interview on our political program, Politics Today. When asked if he will be standing in as the VP candidate in order to beat the June 17 deadline by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, for parties to submit the list of their candidates for the 2023 general polls, he affirmed that he is the party's choice as vice presidential candidate. We believe that choosing the vice presidential candidate is part of the electoral process. And you will understand that um, uh, Mr. Peter Obi came into the Liberal Party on the 29th of May, which is just about, in fact, it's exactly three weeks, uh, three weeks ago. Uh, therefore, uh, and our idea, our idea and our reasoning is to bring together in this country for the first time the largest political coalition possible you know, because we are facing two political giants, APC, PDP, and we are serious about upstaging them, and we will. But to do that, we cannot do it alone. We need to be able to put together this coalition and be, you know, and the so-called third force is now alive and it is forming, and it is important for us to ensure that all the stakeholders are carried along from the beginning to the end. We do not want a situation where an action is taken and then people feel that, okay, well, you have cooked this soup, you have finished it, what is that, what is that, what is the need for us? So because of this, I, Dr. Dunyo Kupe, is standing in as the vice presidential candidate for the Liberal Party. As plenary sessions resumed at the federal legislature, the stock taking showed that many lawmakers will not be returning to the hallowed chambers. No thanks to the delegate system adopted in choosing candidates during the primaries. The Senate Minority Leader, Senator Ain Naya Abaribi, has left the main opposition People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA while the majority leader, Senator Yahya Abdullahi, has defected from the ruling APC to the opposition, the PDP. On, please. Mixed emotions in a scanty Senate chamber as the National Assembly resumes legislative proceedings. The Senate suspended plenary on May 11th to allow lawmakers participate in the primaries of political parties. Some of these lawmakers were triumphant in the just concluded party primaries, but many others were unable to clinch tickets to return to the Senate or other elective positions. Preliminary reports indicate that the Ninth Senate may have a high turnover rate of legislators. I also know for a fact. However, Senator Lawan is hopeful of a better outcome for his colleagues. It is never over until it is over. Further casting a gloomy cloud during Tuesday's proceedings is a defection of three prominent senators. The minority leader, Senator Inaya Baribe, who is jumping ship from the PDP to Abga, the majority leader, Senator Yahya Abdullahi, and Senator Adamu Aleru, both from Kebi State, who have left the ruling APC for the opposition PDP. The position of the minority leader is vacant for the PDP to fill. Lawmakers in the PDP raised concerns over Senator Abaribe's defection to Abga. We felt as a minority caucus that our leader ought to meet with us, not to take our permission for causes, for causes sake, meet with us, discuss with us. He is the custodian of all our rights here. If you want him to consult you, 
I have no objection. For Senators Yaya Abdullahi and Adam Waliru, their decision to leave the APC for the PDP are contained in two separate letters read by the Senate President. The party had been hijacked by the governor in Kebi State, and no matter how important and popular you are, you stand no chance of contesting for election if you don't toe the line of the governor. But the legislator is not satisfied with the reason given by the majority leader for defecting to the PDP. The majority leader of the Senate has not proven to us that there is a division in the, in the, in the APC. I note your point of order. Go to court. Regardless of their political future, these lawmakers still have a job to do before the expiration of a ninth assembly, namely giving attention to improving the security challenges in the country, efficient oversight of other arms of government, scrutinizing budget implementation, and effective representation of their constituents. Linda Akibi, Channels Television News. The House of Representatives has given the indication that it will commence the process of overriding the president on the amended electoral act. This follows the advice of the speaker to a lawmaker, Ben Igbapa, to bring the issue as a motion to the floor of the chamber. Honorable Igbapa is urging the House to gather signatures and override President Buhari on the participation of statutory delegates in party primaries. It's back to full business as lawmakers commence the final session of the Ninth Assembly. But regardless of the comments of the Speaker on Tuesday condemning a delegate system of the recently concluded political party's primaries, in which about 178 members of the House failed to secure a return ticket, it would seem that the last was yet to be heard of the matter. There isn't any material difference between the 2010 Act and that of 2022. And suddenly, majority of members where it has been recognized have been, become victims. Something is wrong in an environment, in an institution, where the two leaders of the Senate would have to cross to other parties because of an inherent inclement condition. The attention. Honorable Benny Bakba further draws the attention of the House to the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, which the House transmitted to President Buhari on the 13th of May, which he is yet to respond to. We cannot continue to act as if we are under the executive arm of government. The, 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 this constitution gave us the powers, just like we gave to them. Mr. Speaker, I implore you as a great leader to please, it is time, if we are sure we have done what is right to the Electoral Act 2022, we should rise up, take our pen, collect signatures, and by the grace of God, override Mr. President, and give Nigerians the enabling of an electoral law that will stand the test of time. For us to override, I believe we require two-thirds majority. And it cannot be by voice vote, neither can it be by way of signatures, unless, of course, you you have enough two-thirds by signature. So what I would suggest is that you bring the application of a formal motion on notice. So perhaps tomorrow or whenever you are able to, to do that, and then we'll determine whether or not this house is ready to override or not. The amended bill sought to allow statutory delegates vote in party primaries and conventions. Meanwhile, the House is asking the Independent National Electoral Commission to extend the voters' registration deadline by 60 days, as well as deploy additional staff and registration machines across the country. Lawmakers, however, rejected an amendment calling for decentralization of the registration process to include religious centers. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. When News Round returns, President Muhammad Wari attends Democracy Day Parade. Stay with us. Welcome back. In commemoration of Nigeria's 2022 Democracy Day, the President joined other prominent Nigerians at the Eagle Square, Abuja, to celebrate June 12 in a parade. Former President Goodluck Jonathan 
President of the Senate, Hamid Lawan, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mr. Femi Mbajabia Mila, and the Chief Justice of Nigeria, and members of the Cabinet, among other top government personalities, witnessed the ceremonial parade, which included military and police march pasts in slow and quick time. <laughs> The 2022 Democracy Day celebration, the fourth since June 12, was officially declared a public holiday in 2018, kicked off with the arrival of President Muhammad Buhari to the Eagle Square. As Nigeria's president, it would be his last inspection of guards on Democracy Day in a parade performed by four units, including the Army, Navy, Air Force, as well as the police. A significant crowd, including the president of the Senate, Senator Ahmed Lawan, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mr. Femi Bajabiamila, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, former President Goodluck Jonathan, members of cabinet, among other top government officials, students as well as core members, witnessed a ceremonial parade which included military and police march past, first in slow time. Then a transition to quick time. Nigerian Army color, the Navy color, and the Air Force color carried by commissioned officers known as ensigns to the colors. The female soldiers captivated the audience in a combat march display. The Nigerian Army Women Corps is the first women corps in West Africa. Led by the commander, Lieutenant Vera Jacobs, Nigerian Army Women Corps, which has two special operational battalions to support the Nigerian Army operations, display their resilience on bike, primarily as a way to celebrate the International Women's Day and the UN Charter for Women Equality. The two-hour event also engaged the audience with other performances like the Democracy Day playlet, illuminating the essence of unity. What can you do with this cuckoo? Mama, hey, with my skills in trade and commerce, mm. by the time I package and market this cocoa, Mama, mm -hmm. I will make triple the quantity of this cocoa. Mm -hmm. There's also the cultural troop display from Nigeria's six geopolitical zones, promoting unity, peace and progress. Combined band and silence drill display with body and rifle synchronization by the armed forces and the police before finally advancing in a review order. The president concludes the colorful parade without a speech as he signed the June 12 anniversary register. Other personalities present disclosed their thoughts on the day. For you to run a modern state, it must be based on democratic practices where citizens should have the right to select whoever will lead them at all levels. And we pray that as years go by, a practice of democracy should consolidate and even improve more. And I believe that by the time we go the route of 24 years, we would have consolidated on all the gains of democracy. And you can see the amount of improvement uh, that are being made with the electoral processes, which is one of the fundamental things that we need to do to deepen democracy and to make uh, the contest fair, transparent. The assistant director... The main objective of a day like this is to ensure a positive reminder of June 12 instead of memories of pain, disenchantment or grief. Today, as we now know, it is symptomatic of unity and patriotism. For the president, it is a recommitment to freedom, particularly to victims of terrorism. From the Eagle Square, Abuja, Gloria Umezeke, Channels Television News. Resolving the lingering industrial disputes between lecturers and the nation's public universities and the government may not be as simple as many Nigerians think. And this is according to the Minister of Information and Culture, Mr. Lai Mohammed, who told State House correspondents after the Federal Executive Council meeting that despite the complexities, a lot is being done in the background to resolve the issues. 
The president chairs the week's Federal Executive Council meeting, where memos bordering on the nation's infrastructure was approved. The council also approved the enactment of the Federal Fire and Rescue Establishment Act 2022, among others behind closed doors. The lingering strike embarked upon by the Academic Staff Union of Universities since February came to the fore after the council meeting. The Minister of Information and Culture, Mr. Lai Mohammed, admits that the situation might be a complex one as he reveals that 109 e-learning centres for primary schools across the country country have been approved. I don't think uh, because we're having challenges with the university, you know, uh, lecturers, we should stop, you know, primary school students or secondary students from, uh, you know, continuing with their education. And um, I wish that the ASU issue is as simple as many of us think it is. I don't think it's that simple, but I want to assure you that uh, uh, a lot is going on behind the scenes. If we're not concerned, we'll not you know, be looking for you know, means to even uh, you know, assuage the, the feelings of the uh, union. We're worried, we're concerned, and we'll continue to work towards you know, finding an early resolution of the problem. In a question and answer session, the minister also reacts to the recent ruling in a London court where Nigeria lost its $1.7 billion claim against J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. The lawyers say they have studied the judgment and they would uh, take the appropriate step, you know, whether to appeal or not. The disagreement by Southwest governors over the federal government's claim that ISWAP is responsible for the Owo church attack is also addressed. The man on is on, and we are in all pursuit of those we suspect to be responsible for the carnage in Owo. Whether it is ISWAP or not, it is regrettable, and the government will continue to ensure that the perpetrators are found and that will do everything to ensure there's no repeat. The vacant seats in the president's cabinet is one of the questions journalists sought answers to. There are six vacant seats as it were in the cabinet as four ministers returned after the valedictory session. The information minister simply says the president will fill and get replacements for those seats when he deems it appropriate. The question now is how soon? From the presidential villa, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. To legal matters now, the Supreme Court has set aside the restriction on the use of hijab by female Muslim students in public primary and secondary schools by the Lagos State Government. In a split decision of a seven-man panel of justices of five to two, the Apex Court affirmed the earlier decision of the Court of Appeal, Lagos Division, which nullified a high court judgment that banned female students from wearing hijab with their school uniforms. In its lead majority verdict prepared by Justice Kujirat Kekireoku, but read by Justice Tijani Abubakar, the court dismissed an appeal filed by the Lagos State Government against the Court of Appeal's decision. A seven-man panel of the Supreme Court is putting to rest the debate over the use of hijab in public schools. In its split judgment, the majority of the Apex Court judges said it found no reason to reinstate the October 17, 2014 judgment by Justice Grace Onyabo of the High Court of Lagos State, which upheld the ban on the use of hijabs in public schools. However, the Court of Appeal, Lagos Division, on July the 21st, 2016, had nullified the High Court judgment that banned the use of hijab in public schools in Lagos State. The appellate court held that the High Court was wrong to dismiss a suit that two 12-year-old girls under the ages of the Muslim Student Society of Nigeria Lagos State Area Unit filed to challenge the state's decision to deny them the right to wear their hijabs to school. It maintained that the High Court erred in law when it held that the ban of hijab was a policy of the Lagos State Government, who was the respondent in the case. The appellate court further held that if there was a policy, such a policy ought to have emanated from the State House of Assembly and not the executive arm of the government. The court further held that the fundamental rights of female Muslim students, as enshrined in Section 31, Subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution, was violated by the state government. 
The apex court, in its lead majority verdict, dismissed as lacking in merit the appeal by the Lagos state government lodged against the Court of Appeals decision. Justice Gumel, who delivered the lead judgment, then held that the use of hijab was an Islamic injunction and an act of worship, he said, did not constitute a violation of the appellant's rights. A news round ends with news from the European Commission recommending that the EU designates Ukraine and Moldova as candidates for membership, with a third former Soviet Republic, Georgia, being asked to meet certain conditions before being granted the same status. During a news conference, the EU Commission President, Osla von der Leyen, says Ukraine has already taken important steps to become a fully functional EU economy. Let me start with Ukraine. And that's it on News Round. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.